Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of ATP Ask the Pastor. I'm Pastor Joshua Sullivan at Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Kerrville, Texas. Do me a favor, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure and do so. Click that notification bell so you don't miss upcoming episodes. Also, give the video a thumbs up if you think it deserves one and share it on social media. Check out the links in the video description below where you can find some fun stuff, including ATP book series available on Amazon. All right. Let's get to today's question. Dear Pastor, could you please explain the Christian view on the use of drugs such as marijuana? I've always thought that it was sinful to partake in drugs like marijuana or other illegal substances. But every time I advise my friends not to do them, they ask, where does the Bible say not to smoke marijuana? Does the biblical teaching against drunkenness apply to other drugs? Is there anything else in the Bible that would speak against using such drugs? Or does the Bible not condemn it? All right, so before states began legalizing marijuana, we could punt on this issue and just simply say it's an issue of obedience to the governing authorities. Smoking pot was illegal, and Christians are to be subject to the governing authorities, Romans 13, 1, and they are to render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, Mark 12, 17. However, as more states decriminalize marijuana, the church is being given an opportunity to reconsider the question according to the totality of Scripture. And so what does scripture say about marijuana? Nothing. You won't find a word in scripture that specifically says, thou shalt not smoke marijuana. So using marijuana in and of itself isn't sin. What you will find, though, is the fifth commandment, which says, you shall not murder. Now, what does that have to do with smoking pot and doing drugs? Well, first, the commandment not only forbids us from murdering our neighbor, uh, but it forbids us from hurting or harming our neighbor in his body. Uh, but it also, as Augustine points out, it applies to ourselves. So by this commandment, God prohibits us from hurting or harming our neighbor or ourselves in our body. That means that the question when it comes to using marijuana is, does the amount used harm one's body, mind, and spirit? In the short term and in the long term, and does it harm my neighbor? Now, marijuana use is akin to alcohol use, then, uh, which is a substance to which Scripture does speak. Like marijuana, alcohol is a psychoactive, that's a, a mind-altering substance. And Scripture doesn't prohibit alcohol. The psalmist says, in fact, in Psalm 104, 14 and 15, He causes the grass to grow for the cattle, and vegetation for the service of man, that he may bring forth food from the earth, and wine that makes glad the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread which strengthens man's heart. Solomon writes in Ecclesiastes 10, 17, Blessed are you, O land, when your king is the son of nobles, and your princes feast at the proper time for strength and not for drunkenness. And, of course, Paul tells Timothy in 1 Timothy 5, 23, No longer drink water only, but use a little wine for your stomach's sake and for your frequent infirmities. So there are good reasons, biblically, to drink alcohol in moderation. John Chrysostom, he said, Wine was given that we might be cheerful, not that we might behave ourselves unseemly. That we might laugh, not that we might be made a laughing stock. That we might be healthful, not that we might be diseased that we might correct the weakness of our body, not cast down the might of our soul. All of this is to say that there is a way to use alcohol properly. It's when alcohol, and frankly any substance, is used improperly that it becomes sin. And the most well-known way of, of misusing alcohol is drunkenness, which the scripture condemns as sin, of course. In fact, the first time that we hear of wine in scripture is a warning that uh, warns us of the harm that it can cause to one's mind and decision-making functions. Uh, Moses tells us in Genesis 9, verse 20, Noah began to be a farmer, and he planted a vineyard. Then he drank of the wine and was drunk and became uncovered in his tent. Uh, St. Paul in the New Testament lists drunkenness among the works of the sinful flesh in Galatians 5.20. And in the very next verse, he says, those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And he writes something similar in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. 
Drunkenness harms the body, it debilitates the mind, and it weakens the spirit's self-control. It hampers prayer, as well as watchfulness against temptations and against opportunities to sin. So drunkenness harms the body, the mind, and the soul during the period when one is drunk, uh, but it also then can lead to behaviors that hurt oneself or one's neighbor in the short term that have long-term effects. Uh, and then when alcohol use becomes compulsive, uh, then the long-term effects on one's body, mind, and spirit become even more acute and more dire. The same is true for marijuana, and really for any psychoactive substance then. It can be used without sin if it's used in moderation, uh, and it's legal. So moderation, it applies to all these things. It also applies to things like medical marijuana when it's prescribed by a physician. Uh, to relieve symptoms of glaucoma or chemo or whatever else, uh, so that you're getting the medical benefit without the intoxication. Moderation is necessary uh, because any use of marijuana does a lot of harm to the body uh, in both the short and long term. Repeated smoking um, increases risk of lung cancer, emphysema, and other forms of COPD. But there are other negative side effects as well. Uh, the National Institute on Drug Abuse lists several adverse consequences for uh, using marijuana. Impaired learning and coordination, sleep problems, those are consequences that may last longer than intoxication. And long-term cumulative effects of repeated use include potential for marijuana addiction, impairments in learning and memory with potential loss of IQ, increased risk of chronic cough, bronchitis, increased risk of other drug and alcohol use disorders, and increased risk of schizophrenia in people with genetic vulnerability. That sounds like hurting and harming one's body to me. The other thing to consider is that marijuana today is a whole lot more potent than it was in previous decades. In the 1990s, the average THC content of confiscated marijuana was less than 4%. In 2018, it was more than 15%, meaning today's pot ain't your daddy's pot. Increased potency also means increased harm done to one's body and the increased possibility of developing addiction. I mean, marijuana can also harm the digestive system. Uh, daily uh, long-term users can develop this thing called CHS, uh, cannabinoid uh, hyperemesis syndrome. Uh, and this is a condition in which the user has severe um, and repeated bouts of vomiting. And so you're going to be vomiting you know, endlessly almost, and then that's going to lead to stomach and uh, uh, esophageal inflammation and also serious dehydration, which wreaks terrible havoc upon the nervous system, kidneys, heart, brain, you know, fill in the blank. So it seems clear that just like alcohol, pot has serious short and long-term consequences that need to be considered before using. Now, the second way, then, that alcohol, marijuana, and again, really any substance or activity um, is misused, then, is to use it for the purpose of medicating oneself. If it's being used to relax, to numb emotional pain, to relieve boredom, to escape the stress of everyday life, uh, to be someone else for a while, then it's being used to medicate oneself, you know, to make yourself feel better. But substance use is always a bad solution to whatever problem you're facing or whatever emotion you're feeling. And the Christian doesn't need substances in order to address their problems, their stress and their emotional pain and, and things like that. David tells us in Psalm 94, 19, in the multitude of my anxieties within me, your comforts delight my soul. St. Peter writes in his first epistle, chapter five, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. And David writes in Psalm 50, 15, Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you will glorify me. And Christ himself says in John 16, 24, Ask and you will receive, that your joy may be full. So the only answer for the stressors of this life, and the pain of everyday life, is, is the joy of the gospel. Because only Christ uh, does what, only Christ does that with his promises and with the identity that he gives us in holy baptism. So, you can use a legal substance, marijuana, alcohol, or whatever else, for cheerfulness, to laugh, for health, uh, to correct the weakness of the body in an amount 
that doesn't harm your body, your mind, or your spirit, or your neighbor. And if you can do that, then do so with a clear conscience. But if you can't, then for conscience sake, abstain. I hope this helps. We'll see you next time for another episode of ATP. Ask the Pastor.